Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City, here is Steve Malzberg. All right, folks, uh, welcome back. Uh, the world is a mess, as Madeleine Albright said, and here to discuss some of it with us is Michael Rubin, resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute and senior lecturer at the Naval Postgraduate School. Hello, Michael. Hey, Steve, how are you? Good, great to talk to you again. Uh, let's talk about the... Uh, the terrible news that came out of Afghanistan yesterday, the uh, murder of uh, a U.S. general, Army Major General Harold J. Green, uh, who had been three decades in the military and, and was uh, very instrumental in, in, in helping to train the Afghan uh, security forces uh, to take over for you know, when we leave. Um, does this have broad implications in any way, shape, or form? Uh, does it, does it uh, point to what we could expect to happen once we do leave Afghanistan, or is it just uh, another one of those uh, isolated incidents where, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the members of the uh, Afghan army revolt and, and, and lash out and kill us? Well, you know, the very fact of General Green's rank makes it extremely significant. The basis of our counterinsurgency strategy is to build trust, but every time this happens, despite all the safeguards we put in place, it means that we're not able to establish that rapport and it undercuts the basis of our strategy going forward. The other point is, hey, look, it's, the question isn't whether the Afghans like the American idea more. Afghans have never lost a war. They simply defect to whichever side they see is on top. Momentum means everything. And the Taliban have gotten quite a boost to their momentum with this attack. And, uh, you know, I know that these kinds of attacks have uh, dwindled down. Uh, from their peak in 2012, um, it, it is, I mean, is there any any answer, any way to prevent these, or or, or not as long as you know uh, you give guns to the uh, Afghani military? Well, there is no foolproof way. Let's also be clear that this is a problem that impacts Afghans as well. We talk on about green on blue um, violence quite a bit, but green on green violence is almost three times as high. So you do have a situation in which many Afghans are dying when other Afghans in uniform do this sort of attack. That said, we don't really actually have a very good idea about what causes this. Certainly the Taliban have claimed responsibility for this, but oftentimes the perpetrator ends up dead, so we can't question him, and other Afghans are afraid to come forward and say, hey, we knew this guy was going to do it or something strange was about this because they don't want to be accused of complicity. Right, and of course that was the case here where the, uh, the murderer uh, wound up dead. Uh, let's talk about ISIS. Um, I, you know, they're on the march. They're, they're, they're continuing. They're growing. They're strengthening, uh, I believe. And, you know, it's not, even, it's not even in the news. It's not even on the, on the, on the radar screen because of uh, Israel and Gaza and, and, to a certain extent, Putin. And it's just not there. And, and it's, uh, you know, to, what's, what's the latest? How, how far have they progressed? And, and this caliphate of theirs, how big a threat is it? You know, I, over July 4th weekend, I talked to members of the Iraqi resistance in Jordan, including a former very prominent Republican guard general, under Saddam Hussein's regime. They were calculating that ISIS would rise up and then that the tribes and the former regime elements would displace them once ISIS was the initial wave. But ISIS isn't stupid. They're not going to fall for the surge again, and therefore they've been consolidating control in regions they conquered. But you know what's going to get them on the headlines? If they actually succeed in capturing the Mosul Dam. In 2003, before Operation Iraqi Freedom, uh, began, there were concerns that if the Mosul Dam failed or was blown up, at the time, of course, it was known as the Saddam Dam, that 100,000 people in Mosul could be killed and parts of Baghdad could be under 15 feet of water. Right, they if could, they could, they could, dam, they could flood it. They could flood that area, correct? Well, they can flood that area. The question is whether they're willing to sacrifice Mosul to do it, but these guys have shown that they don't care about blood. Their view is that if you're an unbeliever, it's good you're dead. And if you're a believer, then God will reward you in paradise. They don't leave uh, it up to the individual to decide what they want to do. And, and we're going to show in the, in the next segment, uh, I have a, a little segment that I plan on showing a, a CBS report from uh, yesterday. Bill Plant uh, on the CBS Evening News ran a, about a 40-second uh, segment, if you will, uh, of, of the destruction 
you know, going after fellow Muslims, uh, murdering them in cold blood, shooting them in the head, throwing them in a mass grave, destroying their religious uh, mosques and symbols. That's who ISIS is. Well, you're absolutely right. But, you know, the unifying factor, and it's an issue I wish that the Obama administration would wake up to, is that these groups aren't motivated by grievance. They're motivated by ideology. So when people want to blame, hey, Prime Minister Maliki, he could have been uh, a little bit nicer to the Sunnis. That may be true, but that's not the reason why ISIS rose up. We got to recognize we're up in an ideological fight, not something we can bribe away. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today um, showing what he uh, uh, presented as proof of, uh, of uh, the uh, Hamas uh, firing rockets from the Gaza Elementary School. We've heard from journalists today, Indian journalists uh, and others, Italian journalists, some providing videos now that they're safe from Hamas, uh, uh, the clutches of Hamas. They're saying, hey, we saw them firing uh, we, we know that their rockets killed children, the Hamas rockets that didn't make it out of Gaza. Uh, and now we could say it, uh, but it's not getting widespread coverage. It's still Israel that are the bad guys. Well, you know, what I'm reminded of is that Eason Jordan editorial in the New York Times back in 2003, of course, he used to be the executive director of CNN, and he wrote an op-ed saying the news we didn't report, which was talking about one Saddam Hussein fell, all the self-censorship that CNN had engaged in, and there was a lot of finger-wagging at the time, but people missed the point. The point wasn't just what they held back with regard to Iraq, but what the mainstream media holds back with regard to everything else. There really should be an accounting for the self-censorship that people engage in in exchange for access. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, uh, using figures from the Palestinian Ministry of Information, we've been down that road before with the Janine massacre, the fake funerals, and the, uh, the bodies of children being loaded in and out of ambulances multiple times for the cameras. So, uh, you know, it just amazes me that uh, they're not more careful on what they report. But it is what it is. Michael, I thank you very much for your time, sir. Thanks for, for seeing you. Uh, thanks for coming on. Good seeing you. Hey, anytime. Thank you. Michael Rubin, ladies and gentlemen, resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute and senior lecturer at the Naval Post Graduate School. All right, folks, um, before we go, let me ask you this question. Do you believe that Barack Obama should be impeached? That's a question we're asking here on Newsmax Television, and we want to hear from you. Uh, you have a very simple way of uh, registering your vote, and I mean your vote literally because we're taking a poll. And if you go to Newsmax.com slash Obama poll, you could vote. Newsmax.com slash Obama poll. We want to know what you think. And we'll be right back with more of the Steve Malsberg Show after the break. But first, stay tuned for your Newsmax Now update.